Hello and welcome to episode 34 part 1 of my Worm Unlimited tutorial series. This episode is on boat building and will focus on the first and easiest boat to make which is the rowboat. This episode is dedicated to Anthony who wanted to see rowboats and well done Anthony on making it to our deed and one last thing Anthony what is it you're driving in your picture is it an open top car of some kind or a motorbike anyway so I wonder okay uh, just to quickly mention this Saturday is the time for our meeting at the deed um, basically when rainstorm calls me we will then log on each hour to check if anyone is there for the meet and greet so don't worry about specific time hopefully you won't be uh, too far away uh, time scale well, well we'll try to spread it across 12 hours what can I say um, I realize there's some parts of the world which probably won't won't be able to do it because you'll just perhaps be when we're both exhausted and need to go to sleep but we will try we will pop on and off each hour and if someone's there then we'll stay and have a chat and see who else turns up so you're all welcome and uh, we'll have some fun anyway we will at least have a chance to chat to each other next I want to thank Norvales Villors <laughs> I don't know how you say pronounce that um, I want to thank uh, thank her for telling us about the fact that uh, they updated the doors in worm it's a rather sad update really because basically the update changed the fact that you can now drive carts and wagons through a single door I mean realism goes out the window with this update it's very sad it used to be that uh, like I explained previously you couldn't go through a single door with carts or wagons because obviously they're much too big but apparently now you can um, because of an update so thank you Nor Villors for that okay next up Tosh my Aussie friend has made two new videos <clears throat> excuse me one is on deed planner which is an excellent deed tool for planning out your deed uh, he's awaiting some votes on that some thumbs up uh, for him to do a more in-depth um, episode on deed planner oh well, Tosh I gave you a thumbs up mate and 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 he also made another video okay which is his uh, week four I believe update is called and it is <laughs> and it's in his usual funny style and he makes a classic mistake in it which made rainstorm and me laugh i mean it was fantastic to see um see if you can figure out what the mistake is when you watch his video well it was that made us both laugh it's very obvious trust me so there we are my dear aussie friend tosh he's released two new videos next you'll notice I've subscribed to someone called Kroll Gaming who um, has appeared a couple of times in our comments he has made two very good videos and the reason I say that is because out of each of the videos he's made so far he's made only two but you know that's gonna continue hopefully um, with a load more but out of them two videos I got something from the first one I won't mention what because I'm actually going to demonstrate making it in a later episode but I will mention from the second episode he um, shows stairs in the house that Peppermint built which is North Laws. but I don't want to confuse you not this early in the video I mean I've got plenty of time left to do that so anyway he shows some stairs in the building that's been built by Peppermint and um, I commented so and then he just like this is what I've, I've maybe realized yep this is a decent person very nice person I uh, mentioned the steers and he f openly shared his knowledge on the steers in the comments which I would you know I'd encourage you to go and take a look and watch his videos and read the comments because he explains about building the steers um, in a house so very very good thank you very much to Kroll 
uh, excellent videos and thank you for sharing of the knowledge always always welcome okay so that's all that out of the way now I know mentioned um, I uh, noted that there was a comment about making sand and I know the person figured out how to do it but that led me to believe that I was a little short in the house uh, in the house building episodes I want to just finish that off by showing you how you can get sand or how more to the point how you can make sand it's on the way before I do that though that's weird see I'm following my headers I've left myself headers but before I do wander off to show you the sand there was something else I want to mention in here notice this wonderful enclosure that Rainstorm has built around the wonderful house that she built absolutely fantastic enclosure here now let me just check my notes right okay yeah so what this is all about okay is me and Rainstorm we uh, this is our usual style of ranch that we start to build notice no sheep no horses this is our cattle ranch okay just to prepare you for some future episodes okay you will need lots of hides lots of animal parts milk lots of meat to name just a few you will achieve all of them what I've just listed to you with cows and bulls I recommend aim for 50 cattle and what size enclosure would that be of course that will be a hundred tile enclosure now I realize that I've made some of you cross with what I've just said because I started off with us just starting with a tiny little enclosure that was in the days of when we had scarcely any resources we're starting to grow this is worm you need to start to think big um, you're going to go through lots of materials maybe not so much on Worm Unlimited although you are still going to need lots of materials but uh, the failure rate is a lot less and it's a lot easier in Worm Unlimited but nonetheless you will still need plenty of materials that I've just listed so ideally you will prepare an enclosure to be able to have 50 cattle I mean we can fit 85 cattle in this enclosure but 50 is a good amount and what you can do when you get to 50 or near to 50 just cull as necessary so as they get to 50 kill a couple uh, breed get back to 50 kill some more breed it's a gradual process none of this you have to do overnight there's no rush this is no rush it's going to be a long time before I finish this series this is just something to do bit by bit so you can stick with your little enclosure and just do it a little at a time it's totally up to you I'm just showing you what mean the method me and rainstorm use uh, as we progress so there we are that's what I wanted to mention before we moved on and one other thing you know in the skills and I've mentioned about my affinity for knives I would like you all to start now commenting and telling us um, sharing with Rainstorm and me what affinities you've got Rainstorm's affinity is in uh, tailoring so she'll have a little um, affinity little asterisk that you can see there next to her tailoring share with us what your affinities are let's see how good some of them are because there are some really excellent affinities that you can get so just another excuse for me to get you to interact with us to leave a comment doesn't have to be a long comment, it can be a really simple short comment. It can simply just say affinity equals and then whatever skill it is. So there we go. Right, let's move on and show you how to create sand. It's very simple, be very quick, but I did, did want to, uh, to just show that at least once. So those watching will know how to do it. Okay, I'm going to need my shovel. I hope you all had a lovely weekend and had a nice chance to relax. Right, okay, I think the sand should be over here somewhere. 
I've already created some sand here, but to demonstrate, I'm going to show you what to do. So, you find some sand. Sand is usually by the water. You'll always see some. There's all you need to do to get started, okay, is go to wherever there is sand in your location. Dig just one sand. Okay, activate shovel. Dig just one sand. That's all you need is one. Okay, go back then to your your settlement, your deed, or your location. Hopefully Rainstorm won't get upset with me uh, ripping up a landscape. And what you're going to do to create more sand in your deed for further use, so you can create hundreds more, you'll find a part of your area where it's, a, it's maybe a little hill or something like that okay that sticks up that needs to be flattened in the future and what you'll do activate your shovel and you will pack four tiles Just like that. Okay, so we have four tiles that have been packed. We will walk in over the very, in the center, dead center of all four of them tiles is a little square, as you can see. Make sure your feet are over that square. Then right click your sand and drop on ground. Bang. Look at that. We now have four tiles of sand. If you want to make your area of sand bigger, Simply pack the dirt in a in a in a group of four, or you can do two at a time. If you like, say for example, you've got two sands here. If you pack both of them and dropped it in the centre, you'll obviously only get two more sand. So create an area of sand just like that, and there you go. You can then lower that land and get sand at the same time. So that concludes the house building, how you can get sand for making the mortar. Right, let's carry on. Because after all, this is about boat building, but we are getting there. You know that um, I, I do like to start my episodes the way just as we've started. Okay, so time to start on boat building. Right, now I have used Worm, Wormpedia again is a complete asset to me in this uh, episode and um, I realise this is going to be multi-episodes, possibly one to three episodes, we'll see as we go along. The thing that I've had to do again is create notes. With the subjects that get um, are very big or very complex, I have to make notes and what I do is I bullet point headings for each topic and subject. I will still make mistakes because I am, believe it or not, only human. So, before I start to create anything, notice the trees and you will notice there. So let's start. Right, now, we are starting boat building. We are entering into a skill tree that demands respect. So I shall remind you of the main reason of this series that I am doing for Worm Unlimited. This series is intended for new players and trying to show them the easiest way to progress, to stop them rage quitting and allow them to see the beauty hidden inside this beautiful game called Worm. Now the reason I say that is boat building, okay, I'm going to read you in a moment the components necessary for building the smallest boat which is of course the rowboat but what you're going to see as we progress through this episode this is a skill that demands your complete focus and respect you don't have to do it all in one go you don't have to do it straight away this is something that, for those of you that do, do not play for hours on end, this is something you want to chisel away at each day, perhaps. Well, as long as you want, as little as you want, okay? This episode is here for you 
to give you as many good tips as I can give you and to show you the easiest way to build yourself a rowboat so you do not get cross, you do not get frustrated, instead you actually enjoy it. Okay, so hopefully I will achieve that. Okay, let's start with my two reasons for preferring the rowboat as opposed to the sailboat. Well, the first thing that is is better with the sailboat, okay, before I give you my reasons for preferring sa uh, rowboats, a sailboat obviously will travel faster, okay? The reason for that is it, it needs sails. That is one of the reasons, though, I prefer to make a rowboat. Because making sails is in alignment with making cordage ropes. Oh, you're going to see when we get to that at some point, cordage ropes. I mean, you're going to see a cordage rope in this episode as just being on 0% and red. So, you know, you've just got no chance of making it yet. All will become clear as we go along. Anyway, so number one reason for me preferring rowboats is no sails are needed. You don't have to make sails. Number two, and this is actually the major reason for me preferring um, rowboats, when you're travelling along on your rowboat, it is not blocked your view by sails. So you can do a 180 degree rotation around yourself in your rowboat and see clearly everywhere around you. If you're in a sailboat, you've got the sails in the way. And it's so annoying. Well, it is for me, because you can't see half the time. I don't know, maybe they've updated it. Maybe they've changed that. But when, I used to well, when I've been playing in the past, that was a big issue. Too big an issue for me, so I prefer the rowboat. Okay, moving on. Here's my pro tip for, for um, your rowboat. If you want to increase your chance at making a rare boat out of the best wood, okay, what would be... First of all, what's the best wood to use, just quickly? Yes, cedar. So if you want to increase your chance of making a rare boat out of cedar, you will use cedar for every single component that we, I'm about to list to you that is made from wood. Because you're start gonna start making lots of items, every single time you make each item, there is a chance it could you could get the drum roll and it could be a rare item. So if you stick to using cedar wood and that drum roll occurs at any time, you know it's gonna be out of cedar that you get that rare component and you will add that rare component When's, when would you add that rare component, in fact? Okay, you've had a chance. You will add it as the last item. By adding it as the last item, there is a very good chance that your rowboat or any boat that you build in the future will be rare. So there we go. There's my pro tip to start things off. What I'm going to do now is switch to Wormpedia and read to you a list of the total components that you will need for building your rowboat and here we go so total materials you will need three, three keel sections two oars one mooring rope 50 pegs 50 tenons one stern 50 hull planks 10 tars and four seats Now, that, this is a little confusing because I'm reading from Wikipedia under Total Materials, which is on the right, and on the left it lists Total Components, <laughs> and it lists the different Total, which may very well mess up my boat building, but we'll see. So on the left it lists Total Components as two oars, one mooring rope, 70 pegs, 60 tenons, 61 hole planks, 10 tar, 4 seats, and 3 keel sections. Okay, so we'll see. We're going to build a rowboat. We'll find out what the components actually are. I don't understand why that is like that on the website. There might be a good reason, because when I'm recording, my brain is not 
functioning in a normal way that you are, you're able to sit back, relax and watch this and see all the mistakes I make. When you record a video, your brain is not functioning in that way. It's more it's thinking about what you've got to do next, how you've got to achieve that, what you've got to do, uh, are your, is your voice shouting and screaming and but oh, there's a whole list of things. What you're not thinking about is mistakes that you're reading, for, for example. Anyway, bear with me. We'll build a rowboat. We'll get the job done. And um, we'll see what components it uses in the end. Okay, so that's the components. I'm going to switch back to my notes and continue on. Okay, so you see here that we've got three trees laid down in preparation for this and in here this pile of items you will see there's various items notice the weights involved here okay the ones that I'm really talking about are the trees and the whole planks look at the weight so what you will do is for creating keels you will need to have a minimum of, I believe it, it, let me just check actually, I won't start just guessing. For a keel section, you need a minimum weight of 90 kilograms, okay? 90 kilograms to make a keel. So the best way to get, and to make the keel, you have to carry it in your pocket so that means you're going to have to pick up a, ni a 90 minimum 90 kilogram item into your pocket in order to make the three keels that we're going to need now there's two ways that you can achieve this the first way is you can cut down an old tree an old tree let's grab one of these so if I take right okay it's okay don't worry don't panic I'm on top of this so we'll go near we'll lighten what I'm carrying so what have I got here uh, let's remove the shovel okay let's try again yep yeah, there we go see the difference of one shovel only weighing two kilograms allowed me to pick up this tree 146 kilograms that's actually very, 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 um, very, um, sorry, I'm just going to mute my phone. Always something that can catch you out when recording. There we go. Phone disabled. Right, okay, so an old tree is, a hun is 106 kilograms, which is odd because that's 146. Let's drop that and check the other one. Okay, yeah, there we go. So that's what your average old tree's weight will be, 106 kilograms. So you can, don't go for trying to carry an overaged. It will be much too heavy. I think that's about 160 kilograms. So just look for an old tree, cut it down, pull it in your pocket, jump on your cart, come to the area where you will be building your rowboat and drop the first tree. You need free trees for free keels. Okay, so there is another way though. Let's say that you get a tree which is heavier than 106 kilograms, so you can't pick it up. What you'll do is you will use your axe and chop one or two logs off of the tree. That will drop the tree's weight down to a carryable weight for you. You'll then put the tree in your pocket. Make sure you don't go under 90 kilograms, obviously. Once you've got done, got the tree at the right weight, pull it in your pocket. Again, bring it back to where you're going to be building your rowboat and just drop it on the ground, as you see with the three trees. We are not going to touch that cedar tree until that is going to be the very last component that we make for the boat because we're going to make the keel, that third keel, out of cedar. Because it will be cedar, that will be the last component we add to our boat to make it uh, the material of our boat. So we're going to make our first two keels out of birchwood. 
Okay, let me just switch to my notes. I want to make sure I've not jumped across ahead of anything that I wanted to mention. Okay, so yeah, we drop the trees. And you also will make your whole planks in the area where you're going to build your rowboat. Why? Because the size. You can't fit whole planks into rafts. Let's just demonstrate. So there's a raft. Okay, it's only got four logs in it. Let's try and drop. Okay, down here the whole planks. They will not fit in a raft. Sure, you can put them in your um, cart, but when you're dealing with heavy weighted items, it's just simpler to build them right next to where you're planning on building the uh, boat or structure, especially when you get to huge boats. When you get to the huge boats, you could start putting a couple of uh, BSBs, bulk storage bins down and dropping some of the materials into the bulk storage bins. That's what I did with the uh, Corbiter I built at our deed in Worm Online. So there we are. Bring your big materials next to where you're building. Okay, let's make then our first component, which is a keel section. To make the keel section, <coughs> I will just show you because it's very simple. I won't, I'm going to use the crafting windows for all the other components, but for the keel section, I'll show you in my pocket. So, activate your hatchet, right click on your failed tree, go over create, ship building resources, and we want keel section. So, we'll click on that. Here we go. Almost made it. Now, let's show you the skills as they go up. So we're now using shipbuilding. Notice I've got 24.24. Simple reason is you can see that I've made all of the components, most of the components except for the last ones, which I want to, which we're going to go through making together. So you can see how they're all made. But you're obviously not going to sit there while I make 50 whole planks. That would be a recipe for disaster for me because that would just kill off this series no that's not my intention i'll only show you how to make one of each okay so we failed your boat building will be starting at one as you make the components they will go up i'm going to be giving you some good tips on how to get your ship building up so don't worry we're going to try again so there we go keel section Failed again, doesn't matter, just keep on trying. Keel section. Welcome to boat building. Notice, thank goodness, it does not lower the weight. Otherwise, this would have been a real pain. But it doesn't lower the weight, so it doesn't matter. You can just keep going, keep trying. It's fantastic. Notice the skills going up. Even when I fail, the skills are going up. So it's brilliant. There we go, we have a keel section. Okay, so... The first thing I want to men mention... Um, about this keel section now that I've made it is notice the icon at the end that's telling us that we can improve this item now improving an item you can use a log of any size it's the quality level remember that matters of course it will need to be a certain weight but let's just say you grab one log of average weight so let's say we use this birchwood log. It's a 16 weight, but it has a good quality level of 23. It's above the quality level of the keel. So we can use this log to improve this keel up to 23.75. With um, ores, with ore lumps and woods, you can only use them to improve until the item gets to the level of the resource. With tools and pelts you can raise them much higher okay but wood and ores they're limited to the quality level. So let's now show you quickly let's improve this and watch what happens there. Okay so right click improve very quick bang look at that I've got a skill gain. Here is a fantastic way to build up 
your shipbuilding. Notice it used a tiny bit of the wood. Oh, there's the timer. Let's just quickly finish this and then I'll call it there. Notice it used a tiny little bit of the wood, but we got a skill gain. Let's show you again. Notice it's 1617. Let's go to improve. Oh, I damaged it that, that time, so we just repair. Notice we got a skill game, even though we failed. We will improve. Okay, so you see it jumped down a little bit. But we've improved it. We've also improved our skill. Getting our skill higher will make boat building in the future better. We are not going to stay on the rowboat forever. We're just starting on the rowboat for now because our skills are low, our tools are low, our materials are low, and, and rowboats are fantastic anyway. So there we are. It's all good. Just like I say, it really is all good. I'm now going to switch to Wormpedia, read to you the notes on keel section, then I will end this first part of episode 34. So... I am sorry for going over, but it won't be long. I'm just quickly re going to read the notes off of Wormpedia for keel section. Okay. The quality of the passive keel section affects the initial quality of the ship. The quality of the active keel section affects the success chance when creating a ship. The active keel section is damaged when you fail creating a ship. Requires some shipbuilding skill to build. If you don't have the option, make a few tenons first. The felled tree must be in your inventory. Chop some logs off of it if it is too heavy to pick up. Keel sections do not fit into a cart, but felled trees can. Keel sections can fit into a small and large crates inside large carts. Two keel sections joined together as the hull of a boat will fit into a car. There we are. Wherever you are in the world, God bless you all and keep every last single one of you safe and have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me and watching the first episode on rowboats. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.